This episode is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. It's light, sleek, strong, and industrial. It doesn't fold or awkwardly bulge in your back pocket, and it seriously changed our whole pocket situation. Ridge Wallet. It holds up to 12 cards, plus room for cash. And there's over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. I really love it, but don't take my word for it. Listen to their 30,000 five-star reviews. The durable material means each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. You could buy this one wallet and carry it for life. The Ridge team is so confident that you'll like it that they'll let you test drive it for 45 days and you can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. Get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash simple history. That's ridge.com slash simple history and use the code simple history. The London Beer Flood 1814 In the city of London, England, a bizarre disaster was about to happen. It all came about on the afternoon of October 17, 1814, at the Horseshoe Brewery in a poor part of London called the St. Giles Rookery. A densely populated London slum around St. Giles Church inhabited by the poor and the destitute. Alcohol addiction emerged as a serious problem in the city. But in the poor slum areas of London, it was seen as a cause of infanticide, starvation, madness, decay, and suicide. 4.30 p.m. A giant 22-foot-high wooden beer fermentation tank, reinforced with large iron rings that held the equivalent of over 3,500 barrels of brown porter ale, started to buckle. Then one of the rings snapped, and about an hour later at 5.30 p.m., the whole tank ruptured and exploded. As the tank was pressurized, the blast caused several neighboring huge vats to become unstable and they fell apart, adding their contents to the beer that was suddenly engulfing the entire brewery. It's estimated that in a matter of seconds, over 320,000 gallons of beer were released and crashed out of the brewery through its back wall and part of the roof, surging down the street. At its peak, it was said that the tidal wave of beer and debris was over 15 feet tall. In the ensuing chaos that followed, the giant wave caused a nearby wall to collapse at the Tavistock Arms pub on Great Russell Street, crushing a barmaid named Eleanor Cooper to death beneath it while she was washing pots. Mary Banfield and her four-year-old daughter Hannah were having afternoon tea together in their house at New Street when they were swept away by the current and Hannah was killed. Another child, three-year-old Sarah Bates, was also killed. The disturbing irony was that the next victims were at a social gathering for a funeral. As the beer wave approached, five people died while attending an Irish wake for two-year-old John Seville in a basement where they became trapped and drowned. The mourners who died were the grieving mother, Anne Seville, Elizabeth Smith, 27, the wife of a bricklayer, Mary Mulvey, 30, and her son by a previous marriage, Thomas Murray, age three, and Catherine Butler, a widow age 65. Scores of people had to scramble to safety out of their flooded basement flats or risk being drowned as well. And brewery workers had to wade through waist-high beer to escape the carnage back at the brewery. Afterwards, there were dozens of injured people, some still trapped in the rubble. But later stories emerged that rescue attempts were hampered by large amounts of people swarming around the area collecting the free beer with anything that came to hand like pots, pans, kettles, and cups. Martin Cornell, author of Amber, Gold and Black, The History of Britain's Great Beers, explains, None of the London newspapers report anyone trying to drink the beer after the flood. Indeed, they say the crowds that gathered were pretty well behaved. Only much later did stories emerge about riots, people getting drunk, and so on. They seem to have been prompted by what people thought to have had happened, rather than what did happen. The London Morning Post summed it up as looking like the area had been hit by an earthquake. It was said the stench of beer lingered around for several months. The owners of the brewery, Mew and Company, were taken to court but they were cleared of any negligence and it was deemed to have been an accident, or as the judge put it, an act of God. There were persistent rumors that the company had bribed the judge, but this was never taken seriously or proven. 
This sadly meant that neither the government nor the company were obliged to pay any compensation to the victims of the disaster. The victims of the flood had lost 3,000 pounds in ruined belongings. Though Mew and company managed by cutting their losses, they requested and were granted a refund on the excise tax that they had already paid on the beer that was lost. Mew and company estimated that the flood cost the brewery around 23,000 pounds. An act was passed the following year allowing the partners to brew duty-free, an amount equivalent in duties to the duty on the beer lost, which saved them around 7,250 pounds. The company rebuilt the brewery and continued brewing at that site until 1921. The brewery was demolished in 1922. The large wooden fermentation tanks that were reinforced with metal rings were subsequently phased out of use after the disaster. And the beer making industry started to replace them with concrete fermentation tanks lined with resin, asphalt, slate, or enamel. Overall, the tidal wave of beer engulfed three streets, destroying buildings, flooded basements, and tragically killed at least eight people. Hey, Simple History fans, get me your very own limited edition Simple History Soldier plushie. Available to purchase for just three weeks from September 4th to the 18th at $24.99 US dollars plus tax and shipping. And once pre-orders are fulfilled, I will ship out 60 to 80 days after the campaign ends. Once I'm gone, I'm gone. Head over to the link in the description below to get your limited edition Simple History plushie today.